Good afternoon. Thanks for tuning in to Dear Cyber Sue. Today's topic is slow and steady wins the relationship race. Well, many stories that you hear of couples that have got longevity in their relationship and they're still doing really well. The majority of them will tell you it's because they took their time getting to know each other. They didn't jump in with expectations. They didn't have a huge checklist that that they freaked out about and ran away because it wasn't being met. They just took their time getting to know each other. And this is what a lot of people don't do today because when they're meeting somebody that they're attracted to, sometimes it's so far and few between with online dating and everything now because people are just swiping by each other without giving anybody a shot. So what's happening is when you do meet somebody that you're attracted to, go in like gangbusters. And this is what ends up changing the dynamics very quickly. Because if you take it very slowly in the initial stages of meeting somebody new, you don't have huge expectations. You're not sort of looking for faults. You're not looking for things that could go wrong because you're taking time between dates. When you do this, you look forward to seeing each other again. This is one of the pluses by doing this. You're not sitting there looking for judgment calls. You're, you're actually so intrigued by who they are because you haven't spent that much time together. You don't know a lot about them, but you like what you see so far. There's a lot of people that say, well, you don't, they don't even get past the first date. Well, the thing that I always advise my clients to do is to be comfortable with every setting that you go on. Take your time in looking at the person you're going to go on a date with. Don't just pick anybody out of a, out of the dating pool. Spend a little bit of time and research what they've got online. Look at their pictures. If it's not online, even better, you've already met them. That's cool. But the thing is you want to do is you want to get to know them a little bit. And then when you meet them, you take your time and just be sincere. Don't go in there like all, as I said earlier, like gangbusters and trying to to make the best impression ever. Just be yourself. Show them who you are in the, initially as a great person and that's what you'll get back from them. A lot of people go in and they think they have to say all the things about who they are and, and all their assets and things like that. And so then what happens is there's nothing left to find out because you've given everything to them about who you are. Keep a little mystery. That's what works. It's fun to be able to, when you see them again, you go, oh, I'm gonna find out a little bit more and they're gonna find out a little bit more about me. You're not throwing everything onto the table. Sometimes people think they have to do that. Otherwise, they're not gonna get a second date. It's much better to go slow and steady because people are intrigued by that. They wanna know more about you and you wanna know more about them. It just works really well. But we're so in, uh, ready for instant gratification about everything today. We want to know, ah, we had a really, really amazing time with somebody and you're going to relay everything about yourself to them on the first date. This is a mistake that a lot of people are making because they feel they only have one chance to make a good impression. If you want to make a good impression, be yourself, be sincere, be fun, but don't be all too much information. And if they're doing that to you, that's a red flag. So be very careful of that. It's one thing to talk a lot about yourself and give giving all your great attributes to somebody. And in some cases, like I've talked about in other videos, people put out all the things they don't like about themselves to let them know ahead of time that, you know, this is what to expect. The thing to do in any dating scenario is just be comfortable like you're talking to a friend somebody you haven't seen for a while sit down and just chat you don't have to give every piece of information it's not fun that way because you come across sort of needy or maybe a little bit desperate because you're trying too hard when you come in slow and you're just natural that is what people notice 
And I know saying this to you right now, you're thinking, yeah, I like it when somebody's natural, when I'm talking to them. But sometimes we forget that. We get nervous and we start rambling about things that maybe we shouldn't. And we start saying about, well, I need this in a relationship. I expect this in a relationship. And we come across controlling. If you feel like you've only got one date to make this impression, don't make it about being controlling or bossy or having huge expectations. Be the fun person that you are on a regular basis. Another thing, you know, we, we put out all this information and give out our best side to somebody that we don't even know. We don't even know if we like them yet. We might be really attracted to them and so now we're going to show them our best side, but that's not always just enough. You have to have more things in common. And sometimes if you're super sexually attracted to somebody, that can cause a few problems because then you're going, oh my God, I'm so attracted to this person. I have to see them again. And then you put even more energy into it rather than just being objective, talking to them just like a normal person, not with expectations that you're going to be in a potential partnership. And I think that's where a lot of mistakes are made. People are going in thinking, oh, this is a good one. I can see us together long term. If you put that out there too quickly, they pick up on that. And that's scary to a lot of people and they run in the opposite direction. Give them something to think about. Make them miss you and want to see you again. At the very end of the date, when it's gone fairly well and you have taken it slow and steady, there's nothing wrong with saying to them, you know, I really enjoyed myself and I, you know, I would hope that we can get together again because I would really enjoy that. Or if you don't feel a connection with them, you just say, thank you so much for the date. It was wonderful. I just feel like, you know, we're just not on the same page about a few things. And, uh, you know, I wish you well. It, the thing with dating today, people take it so personally, but it's really, really difficult for two people to connect, to want to be together for a lifetime. Think about that. It's not easy to make that happen. So take your time. Don't be judgmental sit back and just have a nice chat and see what happens. If you do have a reciprocated connection and you're both sort of admitting it to each other, which is wonderful if that happens, set a little time frame on when you're going to see each other again. It could be maybe that at the beginning of the next week. It could be maybe twice a week. Don't let it go more than a couple of times a week in the beginning because in fast usually means out fast. And I truly believe that. There is the odd time that it can really work well, but not that many times that happens. People usually get scared off and run in the opposite direction if things are too good too fast. Take your time. If you go in fast, have sex fast, get all this stuff going, practically see each other four times a week, they're staying overnight, they're staying overnight, all of a sudden you wake up in the morning, you look at each other and go, what the hell are we doing? How did it happen this fast? If you take your time, when you do finally end up having intimate, intimate moments together, it will be very, very special and you will really appreciate it. And probably the most important reason for me that I suggest people go in slow is because when you go in quickly, you overlook the red flags. That is very very scary sometimes because you're running in the door, meeting somebody, getting together with them constantly and all of a sudden you say to yourself, I don't even know this person, but why are they all of a sudden not calling me? Why are they dating other people? What's going on here? Because you didn't take the time to really hear what they're saying, didn't take the time to listen to them. When you're dating and you take your time, you hear what they're saying. You listen. That's a big, big thing to pay attention to because you don't listen as much when you're so attracted to somebody. You want to go in and just be with them all the time, but that's a mistake. When you take the time and have conversations with them, you're spending more time verbally getting to know them as opposed to physically. And that's what makes the difference. And that's why a lot of these relationships that start slow and steady do win the relationship race because you want to see each other, you like who each other is, you know who each other is because you've taken the time to get to know them. 
Thank you so much for listening to Dear Cyber Suit today. Please subscribe if you haven't already done so. And please like the video and leave any comments you have underneath. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye.